Hi everyone. So, um, those of you who are messing about with Arduino, um, because Arduino is C++, you've probably come across pointers, or maybe you've deliberately ignored them, maybe you don't understand them, I don't know. But um, in this video I'm going to attempt to explain what pointers are, and uh, just show you how they work. Um, they're actually not as complicated as, as people think, and um, to be fair, I've only just recently uh, started to understand what they are, and I've been programming since I was 18 or, or so. So many, many years, and I've not really had to deal with the pointers. But anyway, uh, let's have a quick look at it, and uh, let's find out what's going on here. Okay, so to try and explain pointers, um, it's really handy to have a basic knowledge of RAM and how RAM works and how it's um, how it's managed, how it's organised. So um, I'm going to try and explain. So let's say we've got an Arduino here, and it's a 60. It's got 16 bytes of uh, of memory. And the reason I'm saying 16 bytes is because that's how memory is arranged. It's always done in byte form. So, yeah, you always have little compartments, each containing one byte or eight bits, of course. So, yeah, here we've got 16 bytes. So let's say we have, we have a sketch or code or whatever you want to call it. And we have some variables. So let's say we've got an int. Um, let's say the int is called A. And let's say its value is 12,000 or something. Let's say we've got another int, and its value is B, and, uh, sorry, its name is B, um, and its value is 6,000. And let's say we've got, um, I don't know, what else should we have? A byte. And let's say its name is C, and it, ha it has a value of uh, 128. And let's say we have a string. Now, I may not go into string in, in too much depth, um, but let's go for it anyway. So we'll call that D, and its value can be um, Anthony, something like that. So how is this arranged now? So we've got all these variables, and um, when you run the program, the uh, RAM is is sorted out automatically for us. So it will get A, and it will give it some RAM. It will get B, give it some RAM. It will get C, give it some RAM, and it will get D, and give it some RAM. So how does this work? So first of all, there's an int. So it says, well, okay, it's an int. So I know that that is two bytes long. An int needs two bytes, or it does in this case anyway. So it's it thinks, okay, well, we'll get the, the first two here, and we'll assign that to the name A. So let's just merge these together. Uh, where's merge there? So 12,000, okay? And that's A. And then it's got B, which is an int. So it doesn't matter about what value's in it, but the type is int, and therefore it's two bytes. So it takes two bytes of RAM, and so it, it deals with that. It reserves the RAM, puts the value in. And then C. So C is a byte, and how many bytes will it take to store a byte? Um, one. Um, so one, two, eight goes there. And then we've got string, which is Anthony. And to store a string, it's actually... Um, it's actually a collection of characters. So it kind of does this. It'll go um, that value A, and then there's N, and then there's T, and then there's O, and then there's N, and then there's Y, and then there's uh, an ending. Oh, why didn't that work? What's happened there? There we go. So strings will always contain something that looks like this at the end of it to terminate the string to say that's the end of it. So, um, that's how it deals with the RAM. Now, of course, it isn't literally an A stored there. It's an ASCII value which represents A. Of course, it will be stored in byte form, or actually bit form. Um, but anyway, just as a, an illustration, that's how it will be stored, like that. So, if we were to have these, these values here, it wouldn't be very useful, would it? If we just stored data in the RAM, we just almost like threw it in there and left it. How would you be able to get get it back? How would you be able to know what's what? How would you be able to address it? So what happens is that even though in our IDE and our compilers and whatever, we don't really see this, this is what actually happens. So we've got um, we've got byte 0, byte 1, byte 2, byte 3, etc. And all bytes in the whole lot of the RAM all have a unique address which represents that one byte. And um, and 
kind of what happens is that, you know, we have these identifiers A, B, C, and D. Well, A in this case is actually a pointer to position in RAM 0. And B is a pointer to position 2. And C is a pointer to position 4. And D is a position, is, um, is in a pointer to position 5. So, yeah, so these identifiers here are actually just pointers to an address in RAM. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how it works. And then from there, it, it can find out how many more bytes to read until the end. So, yeah, it's just the um, a pointer to the position of the start of the variable. And, of course, with int, it knows it's 2, etc. And with byte, it knows it's 1. And, in a nutshell, that's how... RAM is managed um, as far as computers and microcontrollers are concerned. So um, now we've got that out of the way, I can explain what a pointer is. Okay, so now the, the hard bit. Um, so what is a pointer? A pointer is a variable. Right? To start with, it's a variable. And it's a variable which doesn't technically hold any meaningful data. It holds the address of another uh, variable. Um, so yeah, it's a variable. So let's just write it down here. Um, pointer, and we'll call this E. And basically, it points to the address of another variable. So you see, you see over here the the addresses here that we don't really see in the compiler. For some various different reasons, it's useful to be able to store the address in which the variable is stored. So let's say, for example, Anthony here. Let's say we wanted to have a pointer to this exact space in RAM. We can do that in a variable. We can store the address in a variable. So let's say in this case, um, we wanted a pointer, which is a new variable. We wanted a pointer to this place in RAM. So we've got a new variable here, so Merge and Center. And the address of Anthony in RAM is 5, because that's where it starts. So 5 and over here you can see that the value is 5. So what exactly is a pointer? Um, a pointer is a variable which points to a place in RAM. So um, now you might be thinking, which is what I was thinking for a very very long time and in, in some circumstances I still do, you might be thinking well what the hell is the point of that? If you're going to refer to or if you want to know the value of, of Anthony, well you've already got that. I mean, you could just look here, you could just look at D. So what's the point in having a pointer when you can just use the variable D? Now, and that's a very valid point, but I'll um, I'll explain, right? So let's add some more RAM to this, um, to this Arduino, this microcontroller. And let's add another variable. Now, hopefully this will explain one very small reason um, why this can be useful. Um, there are a couple of different reasons, but to me it's not overly useful. I mean, you don't really need to use pointers. But this is just one thing, uh, one very simple thing which improves efficiency of some programs. So yeah, um, we're going to add another name, okay? So let's say, how many characters have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. So we're going to add another variable and it's going to be another string and this will be called f and we'll say this string is Sonia, okay? Sonia. So, um, the memory gets allocated, of course. I'll just change that to lowercase. So the memory gets allocated and it goes here. So it says s o n i a and then we terminate it with this. Okay, so then we've got another name. So now we've got more RAM being used. Okay, so I've added some more RAM to the um, to the microcontroller again, and I'm going to try to illustrate now one thing which uh, pointers can be used for to improve efficiency. Okay, now a lot of this does depend on the way you code and all that sort of stuff, but I'm trying to find a way where I can show where pointers might be useful. So here we go. So let's assume um, we have a program, and let's say that in AM the program assigns a variable to this name and let's say in PM it assigns a variable to this name so let's put the variable in so we've got um, we've got string this can be G so G 
will be Anthony in AM and it will be Sonia in PM. So what will actually happen here? So in AM, well, if, if it's AM, this is what happens. G equals D, right? G equals D. And if it's uh, PM, then G equals um, F. But what will actually happen if we do that in code? What will actually happen? Well, what will happen is that G here, G will be assigned some RAM, some memory, and effectively this is what will happen. That's what will happen. So hopefully you can see there that it's a little bit of a waste of RAM because we've already got a variable there and we've got a variable here, which of course we need. But then when we want to assign something, we copy the contents of it into a new variable, which is the G variable, and it wastes RAM. And that's not really very efficient. So let's just say it's PM now, and I'll just show you. It's PM, and now G equals F, right? Which is Sonia. And it turns out like that. It changes the RAM, and it does it like that. It's still a waste, because that variable is actually already stored. So let's get rid of it, and let's do it again. But this time, we'll use a pointer. So let's get rid of the variable. Right, so we've got our free space there now. Now, let's go back to our pointer, which is 5. Okay, so we'll delete 5, because 5 refers, refers to Anthony. We'll just clear that off so we can start again. So we've got our pointer now. And remember, the pointer, in this case, only takes up 2 bytes. And the name Anthony actually takes up 8, is it? Or 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It takes up 7 bytes. So we've got a pointer, which we want to refer to either the 7 byte word or the uh, six byte word right so this is what we can do we can say that the pointer equals you know in am the pointer equals five right we could do that pointer equals five in am and if you were to look at the variable then look at the pointer or the value of pointer five sorry the value of pointer e it would show you the value of the variable which starts at address location 5 which is Anthony so in AM it would read out Anthony but let's change it now so let's say it's PM the, we can change the pointer to refer to location 14 so let's just change that to 14 okay so now we've changed the pointer to 14 and that's because maybe now it's PM and in PM we want it to refer to the other name but you can see here, we've, we've simply changed the pointer to refer to uh, address location 14, which is this data here. So what effectively, effectively what we've done is that instead of copying uh, you know, some text, which is quite a lot of memory if you think about it, we've simply changed a pointer. So if we are to refer to this one pointer, we can technically get several different values. We can change the values without having to actually copy the data. We simply refer to a different um, a different area of the RAM. And um, that's just one way in which we can get tiny little um, improvements in efficiency. And that's just one way which you can use pointers. Now, of course, uh, a lot of you will think, well, you wouldn't do it that way, or, you know, you wouldn't do this, that, and the other, whatever. But that's just, that's just, a way in which we could potentially use pointers just trying to illustrate uh, how you know what pointers can be used for so there you go so that's what that's kind of what a pointer is so a pointer is a variable which simply stores the address of somewhere in RAM um, so what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you how you can use pointers now so I'm going to go over to Arduino and show you how you can use them